Assalamu alaikum and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you today on this uh, book launch uh, and conversation with Dr. Arif Azad on his uh, collection of short essays, Thinkers, Dreamers and Doers. Um, you know, um, Dr. Arif Azad, many of you of course know him, is a medical doctor by profession and he's uh, managed to accumulate many degrees and diplomas relating to his core profession. So as you read this book, you know, you're constantly, uh, it comes as a pleasant surprise, his er erudition, his scholarship, uh, and p even for me, who's known him for some time, it was a real treat to read this book, Dr. Saab, and Thank we'll you. talk about it more with you. Our uh, main discussant is uh, Hamza, Hamza Hassan, who is a cultural and development anthropologist uh, who's been working in conflict prevention through youth engagement since 2015. So thank you for joining us, uh, thank Hamza. You. Thank you. And what I'd like to do actually is to kickstart uh, this conversation with you. By the way, hum, uh, isko, we will keep it casual and conversational. Uh, hum aapas mein guftugu karenge, kuch humare paas sawalat hain, jo hum kaafi dino se Dr. Saab se baatcheet karte rahe hain ki kitab pe. To uh, kuch wo hoga, baad mein ye hai ke phir aapko bhi we will invite you ke aapke kuch comments aap jinho ne padhi hai kitab ya jinka koi is conversation se sawalat uttte hain. Wo, uh, you can also weigh in. The book, by the way, is present over here and it is available at a discount and we strongly urge you to purchase it if you haven't purchased it already. This discount will not last beyond this evening. So, you know, to, to kick start this, Hamza sahab, pehle aap se sawal poochunga because mujhe Arif sahab ne bataya ke aap ne, you have been through this book like a, with a fine poem. So what are your impressions? What are the underlying recurrent themes in this book? which have uh, sort of caught your attention and, and what overall would you like to say uh, you know, about it? No, it's a brilliant book. Uh, congratulations, uh, Dr. Arif. Uh, while the book covers a range of topics uh, from world literature to cinema uh, to book reviews, current affairs and politics, I see that a recurrent theme of you know, exile, uh, displacement, uh, uh, dispossession, these are the common threads that bind all the articles together. Uh, there's also the element of nostalgia. So while in an article uh, discussing Joseph Roth's work, uh, discusses his yearning for a pre-war uh, sort of Habsburg empire where different ethnicities and religions were living together, uh, there are similar aspects of, uh, you know, uh, discussed in other articles as well. Uh, so for instance, uh, the article on Faiz Sahab uh, deals with his uh, life in Beirut uh, when he uh, went there in self-imposed uh, you know, exile. Uh, so these themes, these recurrent themes are there. Uh, but they are discussed in a way that they offer you opportunities to compare uh, the works of these writers who are based in Europe with, with, with writers in your own context as well. So for instance, Joseph Roth's or uh, Steven Zweig's uh, yearning for nostalgia, a pre-war Europe, is similar to uh, the works of Intazar Hussain Saab, for instance, uh, who wrote about a more pluralist subcontinent before the partition. Uh, at the same time, in most of these articles, Arif Saab makes sure uh, that you have an opportunity to connect what he's saying with your present context. Uh, so, for instance, uh, a number of intellectuals and writers are dis discussed who stood up against fascism, extremism, uh, lack of space for civil society, for instance, all of which is, is relevant in the present context. Uh, the second thing that I like about this book is the way he's employed different theoretical perspectives uh, to, to analyze works of art. So, for instance, his uh, particular article on, on the historical novel uh, he's used theoretical perspectives on this particular, you know, branch of literature to analyze war and peace and, and gone with the wind in the same article. Now, for me, war and peace is a work of high, high literature, while war and peace, uh, uh, sorry, uh, gone with the wind for me is a movie with Clark Gable. So, but, uh, you know, by using a theoretical perspective, you get to uh, compare and cross-examine both these different types of books uh, of high literature and what you would call low or uh, middling literature. Uh, it also allows you to compare historical novels from different geographical uh, locations 
written from different frameworks, postmodernist historical novels, uh, novels, historical novels written by Latin American authors. So that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, the book also reflects uh, uh, RxR's breadth of reading. So while an overwhelming number of articles are about activists, leftists, progressives, they are balanced by an article on, say, V.S. Naipaul, who is considered as an apologist for colonialism. Uh, but at the same time, the strong points in his prose and the thought process that makes his ideas so formidable are discussed in a, in, in a, in a very uh, beautiful way. Uh, finally, 1960s are repeatedly discussed as a period of great intellectual, political ferment in the world. Uh, 1960s as a liminal period, sort of, between uh, a very conservative Eisenhower era in the 1950s and then a period of identity-based activism which started in the 1970s. So, while he's discussing Mad Men, he's of course talking about Don Draper's and his character's evolution. But at the same time, he's also explaining the context in which these events are taking place. So overall, a brilliant book, and I think a must read for everyone, and because it expands your horizons and sort of tells you that how uh, tapping into different texts written by people with very often diametrically opposed views can enrich you as a person and make you a truly enlightened That's a very fantastic summation, I think. Thank you so much for that. I think one of the other undercurrent themes you'll agree also is Dr. Saab's, uh, you know, his, his commitment to left politics and his uh, active participation in left politics as well. I think we can see from the choice of his authors, uh, from the choice of the subjects, uh, the people he moans, the people he celebrates, all of, the, they, all of these people have played some part uh, with the politics of the left. And the thing about his erudition is his deep gaze uh, into leftist history uh, and how it has evolved over the years, not only you know in Russia and Pakistan, but across the world. I think that's really brilliant and instructional and informational. I found that very interesting. Lord Sab, I want to shift this to you now. And this is, again, about, I, before I get into, I have some questions which are sure. essay specific, but I want to also understand, and this is, I think, sab ke liye ye particularly, uh, you know, jo jinka padne likhne se taluk hai, unke liye important cheez hai, because aap, सबके पास एक महदूद वक्त होता है पढ़ने के लिए और मेरे लिए बड़ी जो फैसिनेटिंग इसमें चीज मुझे जो लगी वो ये थी कि हाउ डू यू सिलेक्ट हाउ डू यू गो अबाउट दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ एंगेजिंग इन यू नो रीडिंग फॉर एग्जांपल आपने बहुत ही मेटिकुलसली पर्सनालिटीज को डाइसेक्ट किया है ये वो पर्सनालिटीज हैं जिनका लिटरेरी आउटपुट भी आपने पढ़ा है मगर एट द सेम टाइम ऐसा लगता है कि उनकी जिंदगी को भी आप बड़ा केयरफुली एनालाइज करते रहें सो हाउ हाउ डज दिस हैपन फॉर यू दिस दिस होल प्रोसेस ऑफ इम्बाइबिंग नॉलेज अबाउट से एन ऑथर इन देर लाइफ एंड वाई थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग इन यू नो ग्रेट नंबर मैनी फेमिलियर फेसिस सो टू मच यू नो आई मीन फेमिलियरिटी कैन ब्रीड लव एंड इफेक्शन एंड कैन कंपेल अटेंडेंस सो ये सर थैंक यू वेरी मच Yes, I mean, coming back to your question. Yes, I mean, if I, like, I mean, cast my eye backwards over my childhood, I was always a very, you know, solitary and lonely child. And I mean, books, in a way, you know, it provided uh, me a refuge. And I began to read avidly, and I read, uh, Though I had no guidance at all, but I just, you know, I mean, read widely everything that came to my hand. I read, I used local libraries in, you know, I mean, Chakwar and others. But I think, like, the first three and four years after reading, I came to very definite shape of, you know, in my readings. I think some of the authors, you know, I mean, began to attract me in ways which has, you know, and stayed with me all my life. Um, as for the left politics, my household was very, you know, I mean, political. I heard my father, you know, in talking about Chinese revolution, about, you know, in Cho and Lai. Uh, yes, he was very active, you know, in member of, you know, Pakistan People's Party. And I saw some of these figures from very, you know, I mean, close. Um, 
And when I moved to Lahore, I met a lot of people who, you know, I mean, harbored you know, similar views and, of course, shared outlook on life. And, I mean, that was very enriching experience for me because my father wanted me to go to Pindi or to Army Medical College, which I, you know, flatly refused. Um, and um, I said, you know, in Lahore is a bigger place where, I mean, culture and ideas, you know, in reign supreme. And I wanted to expose myself to, you know, wider ideas about that. So Lahore was also at a very, you know, mean, definitive and, you know, mean, definite, um, uh, like, impression on me. And when I did my house job in, you know, in Gangaram, I used that period because, you know, British Council and American centers were, uh, you know, next door. You know, I mean, one on the right side, one on the left side. Um, and I use, you know, like, I mean, British library a lot. And when I moved to England, I, I actually, you know, I mean, realized I have imbibed so much information about, you know, British politics, British society, or, you know, I mean, literature at large or history. Yeah, that, matab, this happened unwittingly? Ke aapne kar li, or this was by design? No, no, by design. Okay. Because, because when I got into books, when I started reading them, I thought that, you know, I mean, this is the way to go, and I mean, you have to read. Um, and, and as I was an avid reader, you know, I mean, things really, ideas, you know, fascinated me. Also, I mean, places fascinated me. And in Lahore, you know, I was very actively involved in MRD and other stuff, what was going on. And I actually fell in with the crowd of, you know, the viewpoint, one of the radical weekly in those days. Then, you know, Frontier Post crowd. Um, and I was the only one at, you know, in medical school who used to, you know, subscribe to the viewpoint. Um, and I mean, viewpoint was the heart bed of alternative thinking or other in Pakistan. So I think these all, you know, I mean, influences came together. And when I moved to England, I joined Labour Party. I think it was, it was the time when, you know, when Tony Blair came to power in 1997. Uh, yeah, I also knocked doors, you know, I mean, doorstep voters. Um, but, you know, I mean, soon afterwards, I mean, after two, you know, instants in power, you know, the Labour was quite exhausted. And, I mean, we in the Labour Party felt that, I mean, there was a, like, you know, I mean, need for, like, left alternative. And, um, yes, I mean, that came very late in the shape of, you know, in Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's how. So, I mean, I mean, three, four things have really, you know, in literature, history, and of course, you know, I mean, politics uh, and arts. You know, which is, so, I mean, these have been my, you know, abiding passions and I have, you know, followed them. And your inspiration. Yeah, yeah inspiration. So. And I think most of the articles which I wrote, I mean, I wrote it of my own, you know, I mean, sweet, uh, like, will. And, and I mean, there is only one article which I did on demand. This, you know, I mean, obituary of, you know, I mean, Nawab Zada, you know, in Nasrullah Khan. Because, you know, I mean, Guardian editor called me, you know, one day when I was living in London. So, oh, have you heard, you know, I mean, Nawab Zada Nasrullah Khan died and would you kindly do us a piece on it? And of course, there is again, you know, I mean, background to that history. Because my father, like in his early years, he's, uh, like he used to be member of his party. Yes, you mentioned that in your book. And I saw, like you know, I mean Nawab Zada Nasrullah Khan at many rallies and this, you know, Noor al Amin and you know Farid and and also when I was at you know in medical school, you know, I mean Nawab Zada Nasrullah Khan uh, used to um, our like you know college principal was actually like the personal physician of, you know, in Nawab Zadar Nasrullah Khan. And he used to come to our college and see, you know, in Professor Iftikhar for, you know, in consultation. And we, 
and we used to meet him and you know and talk about you know, I mean political situations and others. So I mean there is also backstory to even um, like that extracted article, if I may say so, and others. But other articles, you know, I mean came because I wanted to write about them. That's very interesting. So another, uh, please. जिन्होंने बंद कर दिया है मोबाइल फोन बहुत शुक्रिया बाकी हजरत भी प्लीज बंद कर दीजिए थोड़ा सा वक्त है उसके अंदर हम गुफ्तगू करते हैं डॉक्टर साहब के साथ वैसे वो खुद अपने फोन पे लग गए हैं क्या कह रहे हैं उनसे हम मगर ये है कि चलें कोई बात नहीं कोई बात नहीं और थोड़ा सा ये है कि गुफ्तगू को थोड़ा सा आपस में जरा होल्ड कीजिएगा ना एंड में आके करते हैं फिर इनसे बात अच्छा डॉक्टर साहब जेरेमी कॉबिन यू मेंशनड हिम राइट नाउ एंड दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग आपने जो आर्टिकल लिखा है ना जो ऐसे है आपका जेरेमी कॉबिन पे वो मुझे बहुत दिलचस्प लगा बिकॉज यू यू सीम टू बी अप्रोचिंग जेरेमी कॉबिन इन दैट आर्टिकल विच टॉक्स अबाउट हाउ ही रोज टू पावर एंड बिकेम द हेड ऑफ लेबर एज अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ रिलक्टेंट बाई स्टैंड यू आर ऑलमोस्ट स्टॉपिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ क्रेडिटिंग मिस्टर कॉबिन विद एनी एजेंसी ऑफ इज ओन आप तो ऐसा आपने ऐसा मंजर कशी की है कि एक ऐसा आदमी जो कि अनविटिंगली लेबर के कमरे में दाखिल हो गया और वो एकदम इलेक्ट हो गया तो ये क्या वजह है इवन दो यू नो हिम पर्सनली एंड फेयरली क्लोजली यस ही वॉज यू नो मीन रिलक्टेंट एंट्रेंट इन टू द कॉन्टेंट वो बात ऐसे हुई जब वो यू नो लेबर के इलेक्शन होने थे टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन में लीडरशिप इलेक्शन तो वो सब की मीटिंग हुई यू नो मतलब जॉन मैकडोनल्ड थे वो दूसरे यू नो मतलब फिगर्स थे तो उन्होंने कहा हम तो अपने लेफ्ट यू नो मतलब स्लेट पे वी हैव हैड आर टर्न एंड एंड नाउ इट्स योर टर्न एंड आई मीन जर्मी बींग जर्मी ही यू नो मीन रिजिस्टेड ही सेड आई वॉन्ट विन आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू यू नो मीन कंटेस्ट दिस इलेक्शन एंड आई मीन यू गो अगेन ही सेट टू यू नो मीन जॉन मैकडोनल्ड और अदर्स एंड दे सेट नो यू हैव टू हैव गो एट दिस um and i mean little did everybody in you know i mean labor party knew that he would win this elections and i mean you know the first hurdle in the process was he needed to get you know in 34 or 35 endorsements from the mps um i mean which was very hard to get given is you know i mean repetition but some people on the right of the party they made this argument because the field is like overwhelmingly right we need to have a voice from the left to represent left views within the party and uh, so they just endorse you know you know jeremy coven and they are you know i mean regretting to this day is including you know in margaret uh, um, sorry i'm just forgetting that name you know the deputy leader um but but the by the point which i make in the article and i mean this applies to all leaders all over the world um i mean if you look at jeremy corbyn rise he rose to be the leader of the party on the basis of um social movements which had been you know i mean building up for a very long time long time and i mean jeremy is you know i mean one of the person like over is you know in 30 40 years period in in you know in british politics he has been at every picket line you know i mean whether there are like you know i mean 10 people there i mean it may be the lost cause and i mean by the way when we set up you know i mean campaign for you know in democratic rights in pakistan and the you know in general musharraf he was our you know sponsors for the um things so i mean he was there over the you know in 30 years small groups large groups and his authority and its you know i mean integrity was you know unimpeachable one i think the second the youth swell and the youth you know i mean movement was very big and and i mean he appealed to the youth for his idealism for his integrity for a different kind of you know i mean politics and he just became the leader um then you know the right wing of the party you know hit back and you know they forced i mean second party elections on him which he won again you know i mean resoundingly uh, with more margin than the first one um 
but and also he did you know very well at the elections which was also a very big thing for the um, yes i mean for the labor party in in i mean 2007 but i mean in 2019 elections he had run out of steam he was not interested and but that's journey so okay i mean that, that's that's illuminating hamza another of course uh, passion of Dr. Arif Azad is film and uh, I know that you've gone through that entire section on films. I noticed uh, and that's of course a question to you but then I also want you to weigh, on, weigh in with your impressions first. I noticed that there's a, uh, Dr. Arif has a fascination with Ken Loach and uh, he talks a little bit about new wave cinema and uh, one of the Greek directors. But then there is absolutely no mention of any other world cinema, which I found interesting because you are a film buff and there is a lot of other important cinema across the world as well, particularly Europe, but also certainly South Asia. But uh, that's a question, sir, for later. But your impressions on that segment of the book, which has to do with cinema, anything that stands out for you? Uh, the, I think the focus on Ken Loach is because of his politics, mostly, in, in my view. And it, it, it deals with the themes that I mentioned earlier. Uh, his films have focused on the dispossessed, the marginalized, and uh, there's a social message. And he's one of the few filmmakers whose work has actually informed public policy in the United Kingdom, uh, especially for the homeless people. Uh, so it's not just a work of art. It's, it's a sort of a public interest uh, work of art in which uh, focus Now, art for art's sake ka doctrine hai, wo zyada dominate kar hai. But then, you know, the focus on Ken Loach so, uh, uh, shows us that uh, filmmakers bhi hai that are, who are producing great works of art but which have a social relevance as well. Or social relevance not just in terms of showing reality but also in terms of uh, improving the lives of people. So I think uh, Dr. Saab would uh, explain this in more detail, but I think the focus on 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 Ken Loach is particularly uh, in this regard. So, so Dr. Saab, you are... Uh, yes, you know, I mean, Ken Loach, I mean, you can see, you know, when Ken Loach is to cinema what Jeremy Corbyn is to Labour Party. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so that explains my interest in it, you know, cinema and um, mm. um, but you know the other thing is because he is so deeply dyed in British social policy as well. Plus his, you know, I mean humanism is of, um, um, you know, such vast scale that it's and is, you know, I mean sympathy like international socialist, you know, I mean sympathies go wider than that. Mm. I mean, I haven't mentioned in the article, but his book on, his, yeah, I mean, sorry, his film on, you know, in refugees, Carla Song, which is about, you know, the love affair of a refugee in, you know, in Glasgow with, you know, a local, you know, person. The same another film set in, you know, in Glasgow, A Font Case, which is about a, a like immigrant of, I mean, Pakistani origin falling in love with the you know, Scottish girl and like all you know I mean complications um, of immigrant you know I mean community that you know brings to the fore. Um, the third thing I mean he has been very actively involved in you know politics he has um, stood firmly behind you know Jeremy Corbyn's brand of politics you know unapologetically and one of the most influential voices in you know British social policy plus you know in cinema. Um, I think he stood as a you know I mean candidate a number of times. Um, he was also once a part of I mean respect party by George Galloway um, and even at 85 you know he has said a number of times he is going to um, like I mean call it a day. Um, but I mean, he comes back to the battlefield whenever, 
you know, he's needed. And I think there is, you know, I mean, character, there is a passion. And I think the big thing about his film is he uses non-actors most of the time. And yes. And I think that is a very big, that's, that's also kind of, you know, in new wave, you know, cinema things as well. Um, and I mean, they have performed absolutely great. You know, it's, you know, in Cass film where uh, this, you know, in Boy of, you know, I mean, eight or nine, he's the, you know, I mean, star of the mm. film. And I mean, what a film is it? And, and I think one, you know, I mean, critic has, I mean, included Cass in, you know, in 100 you know, great films of the century. And I absolutely think uh, also the very bold uh, approach to using improvised dialogue. Yes, and that's also exactly. something that's very much a mark of uh, Ken Loach. Yeah. Uh, now, we move from film and we move to, of course, uh, fiction. Uh, you uh, are a, a professed, uh, you know, lover of Shakespeare. And, and reading your article, I actually got reacquainted with Shakespeare because who reads Shakespeare now? Uh, I haven't read Shakespeare in ages, but you, select, you know, you, you included all those 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 passages that used to be my favorite when I read him when I was younger. Uh, but there's Shakespeare on one end, and then on the other hand, end, in fiction novels. The novel that stands out for you is Stoner, uh, and Stoner, which is a, 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 um, it's an academic campus novel, somehow shines out for you. Why? Um, yes, I, I think in the eighties I was a great fan of campus novels. You know, mm -hmm. in Malcolm Bradbury's History Man, was the first novel which I mm -hmm. read. Then, you know, David Lodge, you know, mean stuff. These are basically your campus, you know, in novelists. Um, um, I think that is one reason. The second reason is, I think I also mentioned fine balance in that article as well. Somehow or yeah. others, I feel that, um, uh, you know, the main character in, you know, I mean, Stoner is, is, you know, I mean, so vulnerable to outside forces as were the characters in the Fine Balance. I mean, Fine Balance was the one novel which I could not put down and I actually cried. And most of people who read that novel, they have, you know, I mean, testified to me that, yes, including, you know, in Dr. Arshad Vahid Sabo. Um, and you know, I mean, Stoner, like more or less, it feels to me, and uh, and and also the way, like he, you know, I mean, describes, you know, the breakdown of, you know, human relationships, be it marriage or be his, you know, I mean, relationship with his, you know, faculty members. Mm. Uh, it is, it is, you know, I mean, so arresting, so poignant, and so hard hitting. Mm. Um, that I just felt this, that, you know, this should be written about. Or, and I think it is one of a very good novel. If you get the chance, please have a dip into it. Or. Just to add to what Dr. Sam was saying, it has a contrast. I mean, Shakespeare, I mean, oh. oh, I will come back to Shakespeare, sorry, <laughs> because that's yeah. the... About Shakespeare, yes. Um, yeah, I don't know how I, you know, got into it, but my brother, you know, my younger brother tells me that आपने लिखा है ना कि वो जूलियस सीजर सीजर आपके हाथ लगी तो चार दिन तक तो आप के आपने लिखा है कि आपको समझ में नहीं आया कि क्या कहा जा रहा है exactly but then you started getting into it yes I I got and yes my younger brother tells me you used to you know mean recite a lot because my room is you know I'm yes I mean very aloof from you know, my family member downstairs, I am upstairs, so, so there is a big gap. There. We believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he tells me, we thought, oh, he has gone mad, or oh, he's all the time, you know, reciting Shakespeare. But once I got into it, I actually used to, you know, wake up up to, you know, four o'clock in the morning 
to listen to BBC, you know, I mean, series or, you know, I mean, Shakespeare and I, you know, used to get like sounds and um, also, you know, I mean, dialogues into my head and, uh, and I think one of my friend doctor, you know, I mean, Neymar Rahman always, you know, I mean, tells me that you were Yes, you used to be so obsessed with, you know, Shakespeare at, you know, in medical college there. So, yeah, maybe a bit of element of, you know, in madness and others. And, but I also feel, and I have been also very, very, you know, fascinated by big, you know, Shakespearean actors. Yes, I mean, John Gilbert, you know, and Laurence Olivier, uh, yes, Ian, you know, in McKellen, Anthony Shaw, you know, in Derek Jacobi. Much to my information, you pointed out that the Kaidi also Nisho. wanted yes, to be a… Yes, and of what, course. What would have happened if he'd done that? Could be the subject of another History. conversation, but… <laughs> novel, but, maybe. Or another novel, yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes, maybe the subject of unknowns in his. Yes, yes. Yes, I mean, not the Rumsfeld, known, unknowns, unknowns, no. Yes, yes, yes. But then, um, speaking of your selection of essays here on the books that you like and the authors that you like, and this was also very interesting, we were just talking about this. Um, and again, Hamza, I want, you know, all of the authors that he's talked about, maybe some impressions that they have lent to you, that would be interesting. But you talk about Philip Roth. And I in really enjoyed that essay because you, ex you again, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's a, uh, remarkable how you've managed to read across his 30 odd books and you're able to categorize him into, uh, you know, an early era and a later era, of course. But what was surprising was that you did not write an essay on your favorite Jewish author, which is Saul Bellow. And uh, this remains a mystery, so maybe you can shed some light on that. Um. I think Saul Bellow is a very big writer, so maybe, I mean, it will take some time to measure up to the greatness of the man. Um, but having said that, I think Saul Bellow, yeah, I don't know why I didn't read, uh, like, you know, I mean, write about him, but um, yes, I mean, maybe at some point in future, long extended essay or others. Um, that would certainly but, be very but, interesting. But, but, you know, I mean, his novels are really, you know, I mean, breathtakingly, you know, vast, entertaining, you know, engaging you intellectually with ideas. Um, and I think one of the great things, you know, I mean, perhaps one of the reasons I like, you know, in Saul Bellow is also, you know, in migration things and exile. Yes. And, uh, and I think I have lived abroad. Um, and, you know, I mean, migration has, you know, I mean, shaped me and, I mean, shaped my choices, good or bad. Um, but I also like the element of, you know, I mean, migration thing in, you know, Saul Bellow, plus his, you know, I mean, philosophical, intellectual um, stuff, plus, you know, I mean, politics of Eastern Europe, maybe, which, which, which I am very fascinated with. Your essay on Roth also talks about his American trilogy, about how he's discussed American politics through three novels. The first, mm. first one, I think, uh, dealing with the radicalism of 1960s, where a girl commits an act yeah. of, uh, yeah. I think, Ars arson, arson, arson or arson. bombs, arson. Yeah. government building, and the consequences that it has for, it, for mm. the family. Second one is, I married a communist, about McCarthyism, and the third one okay. is the uh, Human political state. correctness of, uh, you know, the human state. The human state. Yeah, human state. So, uh, is it because of Philip Roth's conversations with, you know, recent politics? Is it why that, you know, you yeah, decided maybe, to write maybe. an article? Yes. Um, yes, I mean, is, you know, I mean, treatment of American politics is one of the reasons. And, uh, um, and I actually particularly like, you know, the plot against America. Um, I mean, which kind of, you know, I mean, combined the elements of 9-11 plus, um, you know, far right, the rise of the far right and how this, you know, I mean, German pilot becomes a national hero and he comes actually very close to capturing, you know, I mean, presidency of, of the United States and, um, and actually it happened because Trump is what 
is you know in Ledenburg or others in the north. And there was a resurgence in the sale of this book yeah. during the tr uh, Trump period. Oh, so people okay. started buying the plot against America. Okay. And, oh, and there's a Syria. So yeah, I'm not surprised so at all. Yeah, that's, you that's know the linkages are there. That's very interesting. Okay. Uh, another theme, of course, again is, as, as we mentioned, is the politics of the left. And um, I find something very refreshing about your treatment uh, about the politics of the left. You uh, celebrate it through your uh, essays. Uh, but unlike many members of the left that I know of who are deeply disappointed that they have not come to power as yet, uh, you remain uh, fairly optimistic. And you mentioned this point in time in Pakistan's history 11 years ago when a few parties of the left combined to form the Awami Workers Party and it's been 11 years since that happened. Where do you see uh, this politics of the left heading towards? Is there a direction? Should we remain optimistic or should we be equally disappointed? Are you disappointed? Uh, because like I said, it, doesn't, it is not betrayed through your essays if there is any such disappointment. I think the politics of left has a future if it is um, used, you know, I mean creatively and in a more engaged way with, you know, in grassroots issues. Um, look, I mean over the last six months I have seen on the, you know, I mean Constitution Avenue and D Chalk. Um, yes, I mean you have like you see, you know, I mean, protests every day about, about, you know, like, you know, firing of the teachers or, or, you know, doctor's issues or, you know, PMDC and others. And I always, you know, I mean, when I, you know, I mean, pass by such, you know, I mean, protests, I always say to, you know, myself, look, where is the left? These are the issues, even a small party, you know, I mean, single issues, you know, you should be there at the picket lines and you should be, you know, I mean, standing with them and, you know, in solidarity, in actions and in everything. Um, but, I mean, you know, I mean, left is not there. But, I mean, I came to left in a very like intellectual and I mean historical way. That's why I have never been associated, you know, with any, you know, the group, but of course, you know, my, you know, passions and my politics, li you know, lies there, except with my, you know, with, you know, British Party, British Labour Party. But I think the way you know, I mean, forward for the left is again, you know, in social democratic kind of, you know, I mean, politics, but more engaged, you know, in grassroots issues and, you know, I mean, small groups. Because if you look at the history of, you know, I mean, Latin America and also to Jeremy Corbyn, all these people who rose to power in, you know, in Latin America, you know, Evo Morales, you know, I mean, Venezuelan, I mean, Hugo Chavez, and even Bhutto in Pakistan they came to power on the back of social movements that had been, you know, in building up, you know, I mean, prior to that moment. I mean, Evo Morales was, you know, in very connected with, you know, social movements, trade union movements in, you know, in Bolivia. Um, I mean, Hugo Chavez was very intimately, you know, I mean, involved in, you know, in grassroots, you know, in neighborhood levels. Uh, uh, like you know, engage, and I mean, Bhutto Saab, you know, in People's Party built on movements like, and you know, in people like you know, I mean, Sheikh Rashid, who was the vice president of the party, which I you know, I mean, talk about. Yes. Um, and I think there is you know, I mean, still a chance, but you know, the leadership of you know, in political parties is so aloof and so divorced from you know the real concerns of the people that you know, I mean, left will have to think hard about it, how um, to, you know, claim their space and make, you know, make meaningful, you know, contribution to national politics. In fact, in your, uh, in your essay on Sheikh Rashid, you mentioned this, you make a passing reference to this, that when he was, when he returns to uh, Pakistan, uh, at that point in time, he's 
treated almost as a ceremonial figurehead yeah. for the People's Party who have basically uh, withdrawn into a more uh, a feudal character, as okay. it were. Uh, and uh, he's propped up as a mascot more than actually, uh, you know, being allowed to play any significant role in mm -hmm. the party. Mm -hmm. So that kind of regression, uh, has, has it continued or is, has it? Yes, yes. It, has, it, it has. Look, you know, Bhutto, uh, like senior, you know, I mean, collected around him, you know, very talented people who were either the part of the movements before him or they were very, you know, brilliant intellectually. Uh, and this, you know, I mean, educated middle class, people like, you know, Khurshid Asan Meerin, you know, Raval Pindi. Um, I mean, these were kind of, you know, I mean, intellectual activists who, who, who I mean, who have been involved, uh, rather who had been involved in the politics, you know, I mean, prior to the, uh, to, I mean, Bhutto's, you know, uh, like, I mean, part to power. I mean, unfortunately, you know, in People's Party has, you know, it withered, you know, considerably. Um, I mean, it has, it has failed to, you know, I mean, mobilize people on the scale which is, you know, necessary for a bigger party. And I mean, all the parties are basically, you know, I mean, towing, you know, you know, establishment lines and they are just, you know, in fallen under the bigger banner of, you know, an establishment. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, speaking of important uh, political figures, another family that fascinates you are the Soravardis. And uh, informational to read all three articles, but very interesting that not only Hussain and Hassan Soravardi, but actually, Vera Soravardi caught your attention. Yeah. How did you, how did you, you know, find out about her life, and you examine it in such intimate detail? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, when I was, um, yes, I mean, Hussain Shahid Soravardi. I, I mean, in his story, we can see the rise and fall of, you know, I mean, progressive Pakistan you know, in some ways. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, look at his, you know, I mean, biography. He was of the stature of, you know, in founding, you know, fathers of India, of, of the stature equal to Nehru or, um, you know, all other. He was the, you know, I mean, prime minister of East, East Bengal, Bengal before Pakistan. And I mean, after, after independence, he comes to Pakistan and he, you know, I mean, begins his, you know, resumes his, you know, politics, which was around, you know, in labor rights and other issues. And I mean, what happens to him? I mean, he is abducted. He is not allowed to take part in politics by Ujub Khan's military dictatorships, and. Even he is not allowed to, you know, I mean, practice his, you know, I mean, law practice. And I mean, there was only one judge very sympathetic to him in… Uh, Who heard his cases, yes. Montgomery. So, he used to… Yes, I'm sure. So, I mean, he used to just entertain him to keep him alive. Over. And so, I mean, that's, that was my basic. I mean, from then it, you know, I mean, grew. I came to know, my God, his… His elder brother, you know, Hassan, Hassan Shahid Sorvardi was a big figure in his own way, who, you know, I mean, rubbed shoulders with D.H. Lawrence. Um, Tagore. You know, I mean, Tagore and uh, this, you know, in Majlis things at Oxford. Yes. And if you read, you know, in Joyati Basu was also involved in those things. Mm. So, but, you know, Veera Sorvardi, you know, I mean, popped up somewhere and what a fascinating character and, and is she. Absolutely. How, absolutely. How, what how a, amazingly her story interweaves into that of… Ab, ab, absolutely. If you look at, I mean, I mean, she's actress, I mean, she moves from Moscow, she's in Berlin, I mean, she gets married to a doctor who moves to Edinburgh. You know, then she meets, you know, I mean, Sorvardis, you know, the Surgeon General. Moves to India. And, and I mean, moves to India and, um, and then she was very helpful in the rise of, 
you know while maintaining so a very unhappy marriage yes yes i mean while maintaining a very and also she made you know a legal history in because i think there uh, was the the le- marital issue yes yes you know because she was you know in married to uh, i think she was you know in still married to her the husband who and she to, uh, she sought divorce from him in a court of india yeah. while being uh, married in another yeah, country yeah. so that was a legal precedent yeah. and of course you know mean dr amir jafri our friend is yes. um, spot on in saying that you know maybe there is a film in our life to be made and uh, and and i i think at latter end um it's very sad you know when she mm. moved to america, to america. And she thought and, and i just you know feel like a sad end to a very grand life of you know, the 20th life. century remarkable life and i mean so i think vera yes there is a film you know in waiting to be made and uh, it would be very interesting and i mean you are most likely to be cast as one <laughs> as who <laughs> actors <laughs> uh hamza any uh, other impressions i think that it's cool. now time that we should also ask the audience maybe there are questions just some impressions on yeah. uh, dr saab's uh, thoughts on the revival of left in pakistan uh, i i don't think i share his optimism <laughs> I think the आपका जो वो है ना conflict क्या है conflict prevention through engagement with youths इसमें वो कुछ ominous PTI के तो shades नहीं आ रहे मैं मजाक कर नहीं नहीं just just so I think the opium of the people is especially potent in Pakistan उसमें right ने बहुत ज़्यादा जो left का discourse है और जो लेफ्ट की जो डिमांड्स होती थी वो कोऑप्ट करना शुरू कर दी हैं लेफ्ट की वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नहीं है जो जिस तरह पहले होती थी और सेकंडली जो सबसे इसमें ब्लीक चीज़ है वो ये है कि एज एन अल्टरनेटिव नियो लिबरल कैपिटलिज्म के लेफ्ट uh, के जो अल्टरनेटिव हैं उनके बारे में लोगों ने सोचना बंद कर दिया है आई थिंक कि जो इस वक्त प्रिवेलिंग हैजमनी है उसे लोग सिनिकली एक्सेप्ट कर लेते हैं वो इस हद तक पेनिट्रेट कर चुकी है सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट और आपकी जो मेन स्ट्रीम लेफ्ट की पार्टीज थी दे आर मूविंग टू सेंटर लेफ्ट या बिल्कुल सेंट्रस्ट होती जा रही हैं सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आई थिंक जो आइडियोलॉजिकल उसकी हैजमनी है कैपिटलिज्म की न्यू लिबरल पाकिस्तान में उसको चैलेंज करना पड़ेगा बिकॉज इस वक्त अगर आप लेफ्टिस परस्पेक्टिव से बात करें तो यू नॉट टेकन सीरियसली so it's it's a it's an uphill struggle and possibly this is a global phenomenon as well. it's a global phenomenon i think uh, we're just at the remaining half an hour mark to agar aap logon ke paas koi sawalat hain dr saab se aap koi guftugu karna chahe inki kitab ke bare mein anything please so we'd like to open Jee. it sir Jee. please you can take you can actually take Sorry. 3 if you like sir. my name is dr musafi आरिफ <laughs> 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 वो सब बोलते थे ये ठीक नहीं है ठीक है आई एग्री उसके बाद आहिस्ता आहिस्ता में पता चला कि ये क्यों ठीक नहीं है अरे हैड सम स्ट्रेंज प्रॉब्लम्स ठीक है हम स्टूडेंट्स आई वाज अ मॉडल स्टूडेंट मैं यहां सारे दिन लाइब्रेरी में होता था या मस्जिद में और मेरा मेन प्रॉब्लम ये होता था डिसाइड करना कि ज्यादा टाइम कौन सा है <laughs> ये जो नहीं पता नहीं पड़ते थे वो हमें पता चला कि शाम को हम किताबें लेके लिबर्टी जाते थे वो पढ़ना बड़ा जरूरी होता था तो बोलते थे आरिफ को नहीं लेकर जाओ तो हम बोलते थे क्यों नहीं लेकर जाए तो वो बोलते थे कि यार ये है वहाँ पे इर रेलिवेंट चीज़ें देखते हैं हम देख रहे होते हैं दुकानों में ये उधर बैठ के किसी वो छोटे यू नो पपी ने खाना नहीं खाया होगा उसके लिए खाना ला रहा होगा गरीब औरत बैठी होगी उसके लिए कोई कर रहा होगा किसी के बच्चों की शादी नहीं हुई होगी इसने बहुत बच्चियों की शादियां कराई हैं 
अच्छा मेरा ना बस वो फिर ऐसा ऐसा मुझे पता चला कि इसके जो बुक्स हैं वो हमसे डिफरेंट हमारी जो बुक्स थी वो मतलब है वो फिजियोलॉजी पैथोलॉजी वगैरह और मैं तो टॉप स्टूडेंट था तो मैं तो रेफरेंस बुक्स पढ़ता था मेरे जो बाकी थे ये वो खुलासे पढ़ते थे मैं नहीं था उनमें इसके कवर में जो किताबें होती थी वो इस टाइप की होती थी जिनमें हम पकौड़े रखते थे वो हमें समझ नहीं आती थी दे यूज टू बी अबाउट दी स्ट्रेंज पीपल जो अजीब अजीब बातें करते थे अच्छा फिर ये हमारे सामने इसने रिलीजन पढ़ा इसको मौलियों से नफरत हो गई फिर इसने इंडस्ट्रियस का पढ़ा इसको इंडस्ट्रियस से नफरत हो गई इस्टेब्लिशमेंट का नफरत हो गई हालांकि मैं सी की मेरी पैदाइश है तो इमेजन द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंडस्ट्री वी हैड लेकिन दिस इज वट आरिफ इज ये उस वक्त भी अपना नहीं सोचता था कभी इसने किसी चीज़ पे असूलों पे कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं किया ही वुड ऑलवेज थिंक अबाउट जो हमारे पे हमर से सर ने बोला था कि अगर नेबर भूखा है आपका रात को नहीं सो सकते ये वो बंदा है टिल रिसेंटली चूँकि इसने किताब नहीं लिखी हुई थी तो हमारा मिलने का ये होता था कि कमीने कैसे हो घटिया इंसान कैसे हो अभी ही इज एन ऑथर ये अब से हमारा आरिफ साहब है माई ब्रदर थैंक यू जी मेरा सवाल दो हैं छोटे आई हैवन रेड द बुक येट आई एंटेंड बाइंग वन ऑन डिस्काउंट तो वाई टॉकिंग ऑफ योर आर्टिकल ऑन नवाब जादा नसोल्ला आई फेल दैट यू वर काइंड ऑफ अपोलोजेटिक अबाउट इट सो इज इट बिकॉज ही डेंट बिलोंग टू द लेफ्ट दैट अपोलोजेटिक आपने कहा कि फरमाइशी है सारा काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग तो एक तो सवाल छोटा सा ही है तो दूसरा ये है कि अपना आ, क्या कोई बंदे का लेफ्ट में ना होना उसे वर्दी नहीं करता कि उस पर भी लिखा जाए ये बहुत रिस्ट्रिक्टिव सा नहीं है आपका एक पर्सनल है ये नीट इट्स योर राइट राइटर टू राइट अबाउट एनी बडी बट इट्स काइंड ऑफ अ रिस्ट्रिक्टिव थिंग जैसे लेफ्ट के बाहर अच्छे लोग होते नहीं है वो इस किस्म की चीज़ में फीलिंग है नहीं मेरा ख्याल है ये बात नहीं है मैंने सिर्फ ये कहा था यू नो मतलब नवाबजादा नसुल्ला के हवाले से सिर्फ एक बात थी कि बाकी सारे आर्टिकल मैंने जिन चीज़ों के बारे में मैं लिखना चाहता था वो मैंने लिखे ये बिकॉज आई वॉज आस्क टू डू इट तो वो मैंने किया आई एम नॉट अपोलोजेटिक अबाउट आई बिकॉज ये जब मैंने आर्टिकल लिखा तो मैंने उसके एंड में लिख दिया कि अगर नवाबजादा साहब की डेथ के बाद uh, जो ए आर डी है वो यू नो क्लैप्स हो जाएगी आई मीन दिस वॉज बिग क्लेम टू मेक ओके एडिटर कॉल मी एंड ही सेड आई मीन यू हैव मेड अ वेरी बिग क्लेम इन द आर्टिकल आर यू श्योर हाउ यू कैन से दैट एंड आई टोल्ड हिम लुक आई मीन गिवन इज लाइक बैक ग्राउंड इन यून पुटिंग टूगेदर अलायसेज and he was the key figure who brought you know in benazir and nawaz sharif together and i mean that led to charter of democracy in some ways so so i have i have you know you know praised him i also praised you know i mean javed ashmi he is not of the left but i also feel you know i mean javed ashmi is in the same you know i mean tradition as as you know in nawab zada like you know i mean nasrullah khan Uh, i mean who you know i mean influenced him to a large degree um ye maine to kabhi i'm i'm very catholic in my tastes in so many i mean there is no right or left but left intellectually engages me and i believe you i you know analysis which left offers or you know ideological you know i mean framework explanatory framework for the world um i you know believe it to be the best oh. and i i mean that's why i follow but at a very personal level i have no right or left and um, i mean that would be my ha ha lekin absolutely aapka nahi aapka acha sawal hai thank you very much us matlab hai mujhe khud you know kuch cheezon ka is tarah aapko you know sochne ka mauka bhi milta hai 
अपनी एसप्शन को क्वेश्चन करने का सो आई मीन आई एम रियली ग्रेटफुल डॉक्टर साहब फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कंग्रेचुलेशन फ्राम ऑल ऑफ एट बर्कबैक कॉलेज और माई क्वेश्चन इज़ के क्यों ऐसा लगता है कि कभी कभी आपने जेरेमी कॉर्बिन की इमेज बिल्डिंग की ब्रीफ ली हुई है डिस्पाइट वॉट ही डिड टू ब्रिटेन थ्रू लेग्जिट जिसका वो सपोर्टर था और उसने जो लॉस कॉज किया है दैट वॉज प्राइमरली हिज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन क्योंकि अगर वो अगर दो परसेंट का ना होता दैट वुड नॉट हैड ही सपोर्टेड रिमेन तो अम Why do you see him as such a positive figure? जबकि उसका इतना ऐसा contribution है जो has almost destroyed Britain in, in some ways. Um, yes, I am. I mean, as a image builder, thank you very much for using. Uh, I am not his. Yes, I am his image builders, but his work, you know, I mean, stands for itself and. i mean his work i mean goes into you know kind of automatic integrity and others about your questions about europe i mean i have always said i am you know in yes i'm very passionate you know in european i mean he was absolutely wrong on that by you know totally agree with you but it was not only his fault mind you um i mean had david cameron you know i mean exerted as much effort as you know i mean boris johnson did again the 2% you know i mean gap would have been bridged um you know the third thing is uh, like you know i mean jeremy is not ambitious you know i mean politically if you know i mean greatness is you know i mean you know thrust upon him um i mean it feels you know in borrowed clothes so you know he won on him so and i mean as i said you know i mean jeremy had lost his you know i mean steam and ambition towards the you know i mean 2019 elections um, i mean this is not to distract anything from you know boris johnson because he is you know in bloody energetic campaign uh, i mean as compared to treasa mayo Um, so yes i agree with you i think it was one of the fact. but again you know i mean left as a you know i mean problem with europe as the right of the conservative party is also problem with europe um and um i think that was the undoing of and i mean that is unfortunate i agree with you uh, i mean this shouldn't have happened but unfortunately it happened. then i mean we have to live with its you know in consequences so assalam alaikum ji mera naam khuram shehzada hai main journalist hu uh, urdu news ek website hai uske sath kaam karta hu dr sir you are very hopeful about about the left you say ki unka ek comeback hoga aur wo aayenge power mein given pakistan's political system uh, jitna zyada yahan pe paisa involved hai system mein वन थिंग यू राइटली मैंशन कि वो जो इशूज़ हैं उन पर उस तरह अभी तक फोकस नहीं करे सेकेंडली जितना ज़्यादा पैसा इन्वॉल्व है पाकिस्तान के सिस्टम में और जिस तरह की मैनवरिंग करनी पड़ती है ग्रास रूट लेवल पर आप खुद एक गाँव से आप जानते हैं तो हो इज़ इट पॉसिबल कि अगले दस पंद्रह बीस सालों में हम देख सकेंगे लेफ्ट की जो छोटी छोटी पार्टीज हैं वो इसको अचीव कर सकेंगी नहीं आप ये कह रहे हैं कि लेफ्ट कि अगर छोटी छोटी पार्टी इकट्ठी हो जाए तो देखे ना चीज है तो लुक यू नो आई मीन क्राइसिस इन पाकिस्तान इज यू नो इन ग्रोइंग वर्स बाय द डे और आई मीन मुझे नहीं लगता कि यू नो करंट यू नो इन पॉलिटिकल लीडरशिप ऑफ एनी स्ट्राइप और अदर्स इज is you know in capable of you know in resolving these you know bigger you know uh, you know crisis so you know i mean solution has to come where and i mean people have to come together to find solutions i i think at a time like that you know unlikely things happen and i mean this may happen as well um, but 
وہ مطلب یونٹی کا ایک وہ مسئلہ ہے جس کی میں نے بات بھی کی یو نو مطلب مرجرز وغیرہ اور یو نو وہ لیفٹ کا مطلب سیکٹیرینزم ہے یو نو انفارچونیٹلی دے نیڈ ٹو اوور کم ایٹ اینڈ یو نو مین لوک ایٹ دا بگر نیشنل یو نو اب آپ دیکھیں نا بھٹو صاحب نے لیفٹ کی ویکنیسز تھی نا انہوں نے ایک وہ موقع یو نو مطلب اسپاٹ کر لیا کہ دس از دا وے وہ اس کو لے کے چلے اور آئی مین ہی بی کیم دا اچھا الیکشن بھی جیت لیا لوگ بھی پیچھے چلے گئے پیچھے لگ گئے اور تو میرا خیال ہے ایسا موقع آ سکتا ہے میرا خیال ہے کرائسز یو نو مین تھرو آپ یو نو مین نیو لیئر آف لیڈرشپ تو میرا خیال ہے اسی طرح ہونا چاہیے کوئی ایسا کیونکہ آئی تھنک اٹ ہیز گاٹ ٹو ہیپن سم ٹائم یو نو مطلب ہماری لائفس میں نہ بھی ہو لیکن یو نو مطلب ضرور آئے گا یو نو پیوستر ہے شجر سے امیدیں باہر رکھ ہمارا تو یہ ہے سر جی اور پھر اس کے بعد آئی تھنک ڈاکٹر ناظر یو ہیو اے کوشچن اس کے بعد پلیز یہاں ڈاکٹر ناظر کو دیجیے گا ادھر نہیں پہلے ادھر ان کو دیجیے گا ڈاکٹر سر ڈاکٹر صاحب السلام علیکم ڈاکٹر صاحب اٹ واز اے ویری انلائٹننگ ڈسکشن when edward said was going to uh, deliver his lectures on a, on bbc uh, there was a lot of you know hue and cry uh, over that and many people across the globe were trying to stop bbc from getting the lectures recorded later on those lectures were published as uh, representations of the intellectual yeah. uh, And, you know, Edward Said was rightest. Uh, at least, maybe on very personal level, he was leftist. But through his writings, he emerges as a rightist. Mm. We know his uh, almost championing the Palestinian cause. He was uh, PLO's ambassador in New York. And, and since people have been talking about Uh, left as if left were the only part that could question the thing or uh, maybe only the left has got to be radical. Uh, uh, Hamza was also talking about this, that left is almost silhouetted against this power of the right in our society. And Dr. Azad, you emerge as Uh, as a public intellectual, you know, I want to flatter myself thinking this uh, through your writings and especially when we, when we have got your uh, writings in this compiled form in this book. Do you think that uh, the intellectual can speak truth to power as Edward Said says in his book? Do you think it's possible that you can speak truth to power I think when I read your book, in many of your articles, you do this thing with a lot of implication. Um, uh, but I want to have your take on this. I mean, it is also related to the question that came before <clears throat> my question. I mean, does the left, since uh, you think left is going to be uh, the panacea ultimately for us. So do you think that it is going to be possible? And do you think that we have got the right kind of place or environment for a public intellectual to say truth to power? Um, yes, I mean, thank you very much, Dr. Sibhagatullah sir. Really, yes, I mean, very good questions. I think our, you know, in discussion has come to be focused too much on left. I mean, that left is only part of the book or the leftover or the left. But, but, you know, coming back to your questions, I think one of the other influence on me, which I didn't, you know, flesh out earlier on, was Edward Said. Yes, when I read his, you know, I mean, Orientalism, I mean, it just, you know, in bloomy, um, and it bored new holes into my mind that, I, you know, that's 
how you know in knowledge and power how they are connected and uh, how so I am I mean hugely indebted to Edward Said whom I was very lucky to meet you know a couple of times one very very at a very you know small gathering um, and this is the privilege I think uh, I will, you know, remember to my dying days and what an honor it was. Um, I mean, it's, I think it's not fair to say he was left or right. Or, um, yeah. I think he was an intellectual and he spoke, you know, I mean, truth to powers. I will come to your questions about whether intellectual can be. Um, but you know, I mean, he used the framework of Orientalism to analyze, you know, Palestinian questions as well, and he used that, you know, I mean, framework to advance, you know, a particular kind of, you know, I mean, politics around, you know, I mean, Palestinian rights, and I mean, his his analysis of, you know, in Palestinian issues was always incisive and very sharp. Uh, because his book, you know, the disposition of, you know, in Palestine, I mean, he was so far seeing about Oslo Accord that if you read his book, you know, even now, it is, you know, I mean, 110% accurate. You know, I mean, time has proved him accurate, political uh, um, things and uh, others. Um, Yes, you know, I mean, intellectual, one of intellectuals, you know, I mean, responsibilities is to educate people <coughs> and, of course, to get them into books. So, please buy the book. Oh. <laughs> I just, uh, that's, that's very nicely. Uh, I also want to point out with uh, Edward Said, what, uh, sir, you commented, that, you know, he parted ways with the PLO very quickly. Yes. And his book, uh, which is uh, the end of the peace process, is actually an almost a month by month account month by month. of uh, the um, the descent of the PLO into uh, you know a completely you know a hapless organization that was being used by the West uh, you know to further its own designs. And he is turns becomes a vociferous critic of uh, Yasser Arafat. Yasser. So I think uh, you know, uh, uh, as somebody who was committed to the Palestinian cause, he certainly endeared himself, wanted to endear himself to the PLO in the hope that it, they would actually emerge as a uh, you know as a beacon of hope for the Palestinian cause. But then he parts ways with them fairly quickly. As well. yeah. And I mean, two other things. Um, sorry, I just got. But just, uh, you know, I mean, Palestinian intellectuals, if you look closely, most of them are you, of, you know, I mean, Christian extractions or, and, um, and it's, and even on that, you know, I mean, score, you know, perhaps we can't categorize them or right, you know, people of the right or other. Mm -hmm. They were, they were, you know, I mean, nationalist, anti-colonialist, anti, -colonialist, anti yeah, you know, imperialist, and also he was exposing the link, link between <coughs> knowledge and power, and I mean that's why he exposed links between Israeli states, American, you know, I mean collusions, and how you know, I mean narrative is built, which he, you know, I mean extended to, to how Islam is, you know, in portrayed in the Western media. So, when yes, when you know, I mean, great intellectual. Uh, when covering Islam was published, people started seeing it as if Sayyid were, were almost a Muslim inside because he came as an apologist for Islam in that light of Islam So, there are so many things, I mean, <coughs> there are different notes, you know. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and that particular, uh, another thing that you point out is what eventually caused his very bitter and very painful uh, uh, sort of uh, separation from Christopher Hitchens. Yeah, exactly. Th that's what dots up. Uh, one comment and uh, one question. The comment is that it was an absolute delight and pleasure to read this book. Uh, though some of the articles I had already uh, read in newspapers and all, but some of the articles were new. Uh, what I like the most about this book is the lucidity of its prose and the diversity of topics uh, that he covers. 
so i strongly recommend the audience if you have not bought the book please uh, please do it it is you, you, you will feel enriched by this book so so this is one uh, my question is uh, not directly related with book but your take on uh, uh, we have been talking about left politics in pakistan also and uh, uh, the options that we have hena arent somewhere has um, written that if you opt for uh, lesser evil still it is evil so she suggests that you know we should not take that path in 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 a country like pakistan uh, when we compare the three or four major parties that we have many of us tend to side with people's party including myself and i consider that uh, probably people's party is slightly lesser evil what is your take on this that should we take this part or should be because if you don't take the lesser evil path i mean you are just going to waste your vote or either you don't vote then you you end up as a neutral so what what is your take on that yes i am at one with you on this um yes options in pakistan are quite you know i mean constricted oh, and we have to do the best with what we have so should we go for lesser evil my i think so <laughs> <laughs> yes for lack of options okay. and and please write more please write more thank you very much dr sir ji uh, left right pe thodi si guftugu ho rahi hai aise right ka left right hi chal raha hai aajkal to guzarish ye hai ke ab jitni zyada polarization ho gayi hai hamari society mein agar uh, aaj ka jo left hai you compare with the 60s 70s 80s ke lefts hain to to almost center right par aa gaya hai aur agar hum इसके अलावा किसी और लेफ्ट को आइडियलाइज करें तो इतना ज़्यादा गैप है दोनों साइड साइड पे पेंडोलम के बीच में कि वो शायद बहुत आसानी से सोसाइटी को एट लार्ज डाइजेस्ट ना हो तो यूनिट पोलराइजेशन इन एवरी डायमेंशन ऑफ द सोसाइटी नीड्स और डिमांड्स का हम किसी तरीके से किसी एक एक्सट्रीम पे जाने के बजाय उसको कहीं दरमियान में लाने की कोशिश करें तो शायद वो एक वर्केबल सोल्यूशन हो इंस्टेड ऑफ वी इंसिस्ट ऑन लेफ्ट साइड और राइट साइड वाट डू यू से नहीं बिल्कुल आपकी बात ठीक है मेरा ख्याल है ये गैप इसलिए भी है कि पाकिस्तान में बहुत से आइडियाज़ थ्रू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड एक्शंस आर नॉट बीइंग टेस्टेड एक आई मीन इशू ये भी है हम ये बातें कर रहे हैं ना कि यू नो लेफ्ट की यू नो यू नो आई बिलीव इफ़ यू गेट इंगेज इफ यू एंगेज इन यू नो इन पोलिटिकल एक्शन तो यू नो मतलब थ्रू प्रैक्टिस आप ये चीज़ें डिस्कस हो सकती हैं और इसकी कोई डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स निकल सकती हैं अब तो कोई एक्शन हो ही नहीं ना रहा यू नो वो मतलब इलेक्शंस में आपके कुछ बंदे होते हैं आर पार्टी ने रखे हुए हैं इधर उधर स्टूडेंट्स यूनियन बैन है और इसमें बहुत बड़ा गैप है जिसकी वजह से बास पार्टीज़ ने फ़ायदा उठाया I believe that if you test these ideas on the campuses, if you open up, you know, in student politics, to contestation of ideas, so, I mean, there are many things. In my opinion, you know, settle can be done in such things. But if you keep on doing artificial things for a long time, you know, I mean, you will have a lot of problems. In my opinion, and and all this we are doing artificially. The parties are also doing something else. हम यहाँ बैठ के यू नो करें लेफ्ट की छोटी छोटी पार्टियाँ भी अपना वो यू नो स्कूल शकूल करके इधर उधर चली जाती हैं लेकिन उसमें जिन पार्टियों का कोई यू नो मतलब थोड़ा सा यू नो मतलब अवेलेबल चॉइसेस और जो मेन्यू है उसमें एक दो तो फिर हमें यू नो मतलब इलेक्शन भी अगर यू नो फ्री एंड फेयर हो और यू नो मतलब मेन्यू हो तो मेरा ख्याल है आहिस्ता आहिस्ता चीज़ें इम्प्रूव हो जाएंगी आई एम आई एम नॉट दैट यू नो पेसिमिस्टिक बट यू आर राइट अबाउट यू नो पोलराइजेशन लेकिन ये ऐसे ही गैप्स होंगे एक्शन से एंगेजमेंट से और यू नो मतलब डिस्कशन से स्टूडेंट पॉलिटिक्स ओपन हो फिर मतलब ट्रेड यूनियन मूवमेंट्स शुड हैव देयर वे और यू नो पोलिटिकल पार्टीज उनके साथ इंगेज करें अब अब इसमें इतना यू नो मतलब टैलेंट बैठा हुआ है कोई यू नो पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज तो एंगेज नहीं करती ना मतलब लोगों को सारी का फायदा नहीं है कुनामिदी का भी फायदा है बेहतर ये ट्रू जी जी बिल्कुल 
steps. Uh, sir, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, I have got a chance to look at the book and especially I have looked at the content. Jo uh, ek section ya do sections mein hai ke people, Pakistani lives and global lives. To usme or ideas or people of our time jo ke title mein hai to hum dekhe to science ka to bahut zyada kirdar hai. To apne kisi scientific shakshiyat ko jaga nahi thi. Pehla saal aur dusra ye ke apne jo ke thoda sa tilt leftist pe hai aur usko apne counter balance kiya hai. कुछ और आइडिया से जैसे मैडम नूर जहान और ऐसी शख्सियत हैं या नवाब ज़ादा नसरुल्ला खान वगैरह तो उसको यानी कि थोड़ा सा बैलेंस वो चीज़ को कर रही है तो क्राइटेरिया क्या था कि वो आइडिया या पीपल जो आपकी किताब का पार्ट बने व्हाट वाज़ द क्राइटेरिया के इट इज़ द क्राइटेरिया दैट इज मेकिंग दिस आइडिया इन टू माई बुक थैंक यू वेरी मच नहीं कोई बैलेंस कोई यू नो मतलब स्टोरी नहीं मैंने की कि यार एक का व्यू पॉइंट लेना इट इट जस्ट हैपन दैट वे ऑर्गेनिकली अब अब यू नो मतलब मैडम नूर जहाँ के बारे में आप बात ना करें पाकिस्तान में तो फिर तो कोई वो तो राइट वो तो मैडम मैडम है ना तो उनका जो यू नो रोल है पाकिस्तान के मतलब एक लिहाज से पाकिस्तान के आर्ट्स यू नो सिनेमा ओपननेस और एक ख़ास एज को रिप्रेजेंट करना वो तो एक 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 यू नो नेशनल फिगर मतलब जहाँ तक साइंस का है मैं तो साइंस से बहुत यू नो दूर भागता रहा हूँ लेकिन उसमें कुछ है यू नो मतलब साइंटिस्ट वो मतलब हैंस रॉसलिंग है उनका मैंने जिक्र किया सुई डिश जो एपिडेमियोलॉजिस्ट हैं और लेकिन मैंने कोई इस तरह सोचा नहीं कि कोई मैंने यू नो हर चीज़ को बैलेंस करना है तो मैं खुद भी खासा यू नो मतलब अनबैलेंस तो अनबैलेंस ही बुक है नहीं बताया कि आइडियाज को किस पैमाने पर आपने शामिल किया इस किताब में नहीं क्या आइडियाज मतलब जो भी आपके थॉट्स थे कि देर इज अटन लिमिट के मतलब ठीक है मैं इस चीज़ को रखूँगा इस चीज़ को बाहर रखूँगा तो यार वैसे किताब आप उन्होंने कहा ना कि ऑर्गेनिकली हुआ है ना तो प्रोसेस वैसे तो किताब आपने आधा घंटा पढ़ी है मैं देखता रहा हूँ तो मतलब पूरी पढ़ लें तो फिर हम बात करें असल इट वॉज रियली प्लेजरेबल कि यहाँ बैठ के आपको सुनते हुए कि आप डिफरेंट बातें कर रहे हैं इस तरह स्पेशली लेफ्टस्ट राइटर्स लेकिन एक जो बात विच रिली स्ट्रक विद मी वॉज वैन यू मैंशन शेक्सपियर सो माई मेन क्वेश्चन टू यू इज के इज शेक्सपियर रिली अंडर रेटेड और इज द न्यू जनरेशन रिली नॉट गेटिंग मच ऑफ शेक्सपियर एंड द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज के डी यू थिंक दैट शेक्सपियर लिटरेचर और लिटरेचर इन जनरल हैज़ एन इम्पैक्ट more presently or was it more impactful last century or in the olden times i think some writers some books i mean have acquired the halo of you know universality about them um, you know shakespeare is one of them and if you listen to bbc program you know I mean desert island discs okay they give you you know I mean choice of you know taking two books you know with you uh, as a cast away one is shakespeare and other is bible then you have the choice of another thing so this this is this is big western canon and uh, i mean which has acquired you know in some elements of you know uh, universality and of course you know in lasting influence or others but then there is you know in big debate about whether you know western canon you know should be classed as like i mean universalist in its applications and other mm. but that is a debate we can have uh, you know and also i just wanted to ask one more thing because ke know, basically on. do you believe that shakespeare impacted your writing in any way or did you matlab matlab was he impactful to your writing in yes, any way yes. or not yes i i do believe in some ways yes okay and also i'm really looking forward to read the book which you wrote खरीदो किताब खरीदो किताब हर एक को 
I think we are almost uh, running out of time. So there are two more questions, I think. आप हमें वक्त का बता दीजिएगा, ठीक है ना? सर मैं इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन का स्टूडेंट हूँ, चुनके बात सारी लेफ्ट राइट की हो रही है, तो मेरा क्वेश्चन भी लेफ्ट राइट सी ही है। ओह यार, ओके। सर वो लेफ्ट जो राइट के अगेंस्ट भी स्टैंड नहीं कर पा रहा, ना आज कर पा रहा है, ना पहले कभी किया है पाकिस्तान में, तो अभी जो एक न्यू आइडियोलॉजी एक खास पॉलिटिकल पार्टी एक फार राइट एजेंडा के तहत वो बेसिकली न्यूट्रल को पुश करने के लिए एक आइडिया पुश बैक करने के लिए एक आइडियोलॉजी प्रमोट कर रहे लेकिन उसका ज्यादा जो नुकसान है सर मेरी नजर में वो लिफ्ट को हो रहा है क्योंकि किसी भी किसी को भी लिफ्ट की तरफ लाने के लिए पहले उनको राइट की तरफ जो गए एक्सट्रीम तक वहां से वापिस लाना पड़ता है अब जब राइटिस्ट को हम वापस नहीं ला पा रहे थे, तो फार राइट को कैसे काउंटर करेंगे? सर मेरा सवाल प्रैग्मेटिक बेसिस पे है, ना लिफ्ट के पास जो पेटागॉजिकल टूल्स हैं, लाइक करिकुलम लिफ्ट के पास नहीं है, और आजकल का जो नौजवान है, वो वेक्टर्स ऑफ डिस्कोर्स बन जाते हैं बहुत इजीली, ना लिफ्ट के पास कोई जिस के थ्रू लेफ्ट का राइज हो सकता है। थैंक यू सर। मतलब ये बात गलत है कि लेफ्ट के पास डिस्कोर्स नहीं है। डिस्कोर्स तो है और शायद वो वो पाकिस्तान के सोशल मीडिया पे नहीं है ना। आई थिंक दैट दैट मे बी द इश्यू। और दूसरे लोग मेरा ख्याल है किताबें नहीं पढ़ते और भी चीजें। तो वो तो है और लेफ्ट का बिल्कुल यू नो दैट डिस्कोर्स भी है और उसकी यू नो पॉलिटिक्स भी है यू नो मतलब यूरोप में बहुत सी लेफ्ट पार्टीज के पास गवर्नमेंट्स हैं यू नो मतलब पुर्तगाल देख ले अब एसडीपी यू नो जर्मनी में आ है यू नो मतलब स्कैंडिनेवियन कंट्रीज में है तो ये ये यू नो पॉलिटिक्स चल रही है दूसरी जो आपने वो यू नो मतलब नेशनलिस्ट यू नो मतलब पॉलिटिक्स की बात की वो देखें वो तो लंबा एक खास किस्म का यू यू नो वो एक खास किस्म का टेस्ट ट्यूब किस्म की चीजें हुई हैं तो आई मीन हॉपफुली व्हेन रियल पॉलिटिक्स यू नो मतलब फ्री एंड फेयर और यू नो मतलब वाइडर होंगे और जैसे मैंने पहले बात की कि आइडियाज की यू नो मतलब कंटेस्टेशन जब होगी हर फील्ड में तो आई मीन वी विल अराइव एट यू नो मतलब स और वो मेरे ख्याल है पॉलिटिक्स में भी आ जाएगा। But to address that मेरे ख्याल है पाकिस्तान के और बड़े मसले हैं जिन पे ये you know तवज्जो concretely चाहिए। Yes you know population being one of them you know securitized और ऐसी चीजें I think we need to you know जी नहीं वो नहीं वो मज़र साहब भी हैं Shukriya, Dr. Sahib, you are very happy to have you. Thank you. And I look forward to buying a copy and getting it signed by you. Oh, thank you very much. Dr. Sahib, I wanted to talk about this, or I wanted to talk about Sheikh Rashid Sahib. And, you know, because I was very close to him, and I happen to be his paternal grandson. Oh, 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 oh. So, I saw him in a lot of years, and I saw him in a lot of years, and I saw him in a lot of years. तो देखा ये कि जब पीपल्स पार्टी जब वो पेसेंट्री को रैली अराउंड करना था, जब लेबर क्लास को ऑर्गेनाइज करना था, जब उनकी ताकत को इस्तेमाल करना था, तो उनकी पॉलिटिक्स बड़ी रेलेवेंट थी पीपल्स पार्टी के लिए। और कन्वीनिएंटली हमने देखा कि खास तौर पे नवे के इलेक्शन के बाद, जिसके बड़ी लाहौर के वाले से तो वो बड़ी टेरिबल डिफीट हुई लेकिन वो शेख साहब के लिए लोग वोट डालने आते थे और बड़े थे मार्जिन से इनफैक्ट सबसे ज़्यादा वोट उनको ही पड़े थे लाहौर में अपनी कंस्टिट्यूएंसी में तो बड़े थे मार्जिन से उन्होंने लूज किया डिस्पाइट द फैक्ट दैट ही हैड नो मनी टू कंटेस्ट इलेक्शन और ये भी एक बड़ा सवाल है कि एक ऐसा शख्स जो है जिसकी बड़ी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन हो नजरियाती तौर पर और उसके पास वो वसाइल ही ना हो इलेक्शन को लड़ने के so anyways, conveniently, in the real politics of the altar, 
जो है वो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इस तरह की नज़रियाती लोगों की सेक्रीफाइस की गई और आज का अलमिया ये है कि आज का जो ट्वेंटीज़ और थर्टीज़ में नौजवान है उसको ये पता ही नहीं है कि पीपल्स पार्टी की जो लेफ्ट के हवाले से नज़रियाती एहसास है वो क्या है सो so, और जिस तरह का अब हम देख रहे हैं डिग्रेडेशन ख़ास तौर पर जिसमें जिसको फ्यूल कर रहा है सोशल मीडिया जिसमें क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग बिल्कुल ख़त्म हो के रह गई है और सियासी शूर बिल्कुल नापैद है सो क्या हाउ डू वी एड्रेस दिस कंसिडरिंग के चैलेंजेस अब बिल्कुल ऐसे हैं कि हमें उस तरफ आना पड़ेगा हमें उस तरह से सोचना पड़ेगा थैंक यू ये समीन थैंक यू मजर साहब मुझे नहीं पता आप यूनो शेख रशीद साहब के इतने इस पर तो मेरे ख्याल लंबी बात बनती है मैं सिर्फ बताऊँ एटी नाइन का जो मतलब इलेक्शन था उसमें मैंने शेख साहब की कैंपेन में काम किया और जो आप वो मतलब मनी इशूज़ कह रहे हैं वो दैट वॉज ऑलवेज अ बिग इशू वो नीचे कयूम निज़ामी साहब लड़ रहे थे ना उस यू नो कंस्टे तो उनके पास भी पैसे नहीं थे और तो दोनों टिकट ऐसे लोगों को दिया गया तो बड़ा मसला बन गया था तो और आई थिंक दैट इज़ दैट इज़ अ रियल इशू और इन्होंने भी बात की कि पाकिस्तानी पॉलिटिक्स में यू नो पैसे की अहमियत और लेफ्ट कैसे लूज करता है तो मेरे ख्याल है थोड़ा सा कनेक्शन है मेरे ख्याल है पहले भी ये मेड दिस पॉइंट के अगर यू नो स्मॉल लेवल पे लोग ऑर्गनाइज करें अराउंड इश्यूज करें स्टूडेंट्स यूनियन हो ट्रेड यूनियन मूवमेंट्स हों तो मतलब पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज अपने इलेक्शन करवाएं उसमें अगर कोई लेफ्ट की करंट है जिस तरह मतलब लेबर पार्टी में है लोग आते हैं आठ आठ दस लेफ्ट के यू नो छोटे मोटे उसमें हिस्टोरिकली ग्रुप्स चल रहे हैं और उसमें वो पार्टी में होती है डिबेट वो खा उनको इतना कोई यू मतलब ट्रैक्शन विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम दे मे लूज ट्रैक्शन लेकिन मतलब डिबेट इज़ ऑन गोइंग फॉर एग्जांपल इन द लेबर पार्टी यू नो मतलब कैंपेन ग्रुप वेन आई वर्क यू नो वेरी क्लोजली विद कोबिन इन यू नो इन द नाइन्टीज तो यू नो कैंपेन ग्रुप ऑफ यू नो लेफ्टिस्ट वॉज वेरी एक्टिव इन द पार्लियामेंट तो मतलब थर्टी फोर्टी उनके एम होते थे तो वो यू नो बहुत ज़्यादा यू नो विटल डाउन हो गया और तो मेरा ख्याल है पार्टीज़ के थ्रू काम करना चाहिए और यू नो पार्टीज़ को इंगेज करना चाहिए और यू नो पॉलिसी बनाएं तो ऐसे और अबव ऑल एजुकेशन मेरा ख्याल है जहाँ भी लोगों से बात हो तो वो आई मीन लेफ्ट शुड ऑर्गेनाइज एंड आई मीन लेफ्ट एजुकेशन इज़ एक्चुअली वेरी क्रूशल टू ऑल दिस सॉरी डॉक्टर साहब आई थिंक ये लास्ट क्वेश्चन होगा आई एम हेयर जी थैंक यू आजम डॉक्टर साहब वो इशू यही है कि अभी भी जो किताब पढ़ के आ रहा हूँ वो डॉक्टर मोइन कुरेशी की है जो फार्मर चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर ऑफ इंडिया है तो लेकिन यह है कि अब वो मुझे अवेलेबल नहीं है वो क्वेश्चन आपसे पूछूँगा और जब आपकी बुक पढ़ लूँगा तो फिर किसी और बुक लॉन्च में वो क्वेश्चन रेस कर लूँगा एक्चुअली जो उन्होंने डिबेट की और दो बड़े ओपन क्वेश्चन छोड़े हैं वो मेरे लिए ज़्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग थे जो रेलिवेंट है आज की डिबेट से एक तो उन्होंने काफ़ी जायज़ा लिया जो इंडिया में डेमोक्रेसी है पाकिस्तान इस पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया उस तरह करके देखा और फिर उन्होंने हिस्टोरिक जो इसकी रूट्स हैं उसके ऊपर बात की है और फिर इस नतीजे पर आखिर में ख़ुद वो हैरान हैं और सवाल उठा रहे हैं कि हज़ारों साल पुरानी डेमोक्रेसी होने के बावजूद यहाँ पर पंचायत का निज़ाम होना और इस तरह की इस्लाम मशवरे के जो फॉरम्स हैं वो मौजूद होना जो कि किसी न किसी तौर पे पार्लियामेंट के मुतबाद के तौर पे काम करते हैं लेकिन वो कहते हैं कि हैरान हूँ कि यहाँ पे डेमोक्रेसी पनप क्यों नहीं सकी और वो इंडिया की डेमोक्रेसी से भी खुश नहीं है एक और क्वेश्चन वो इसी तरह ओपन छोड़ते हैं कि लाइक हमने वेमेन एम्पावरमेंट को भी हमने इंश्योर किया इवन वो रिसेंट जो एग्जाम्पल कोट करते हैं कि नाइनटीन में हमारी पार्लियामेंट में एक वफाकी वज़ी भी मौजूद हैं जिस वक्त के बरतानिया में वोट का राइट ही नहीं दिया गया था वेमेन को लेकिन उसके बाद फिर वो आज के हालात पे आते हैं वो फिर कहते हैं कि वेमेन की सूरत हाल अभी भी यहाँ पे इसी तरह की है तो वो वाई नेशन फेल की तरफ भी थोड़ा सा वो जाता है कि क्या हमारे कोई कलर के साथ मसला है जोग्राफी के साथ इशू है या क्लाइमेट का कोई प्रॉब्लम है आखिर ये इशू है कहाँ पर आई एक्चुअली डिन गेट आई मीन यू आई थिंक वो ये कह रहे हैं कि मतलब है कि वाई यू डेमोक्रेसी फॉर एग्जाम्पल नॉट बीन एबल टू थ्राइव या ये जो ट्रेडिशनल सिस्टम्स हैं Uh, you know feudal structures I mean, in structures India, 
in india and pakistan you know region actually india is uh, like pakistan is also part of india so in that context we don't need debate hai ki like hum baat to karte hain right left ya ek no i mean in india you know in democracy is you know thriving and has thrived na to wo saath saath to chal rahe hain sare you know matlab structures lekin uninterrupted operations to hai na democracy ka wahan aur jo western you know west minister स्टाइल हम कहते हैं वो तो है बाकी ये है कि मतलब डेमोक्रेसी से कोई बंदा कोई आइडियल कोई भी खुश नहीं है यू नो यूरोप में भी बात होती है कि टर्न आउट बड़ा लो है लोग नहीं जा रहे इसको कैसे यू नो मतलब रिवाइव किया जाए लेकिन इससे बेहतर कोई सिस्टम है नहीं ना दिस इज दिस इज द दिस इज द लाइक आई मीन बेस्ट यू नो पॉसिबल बेस्ट नोन you know system which seems to have worked you know all right for you know all the reason to mere khayal hai better you know mean stick with the known than the unknown i would rather say my answer whether i my answer is satisfied you or not but dr sahab bahut acha hai aur dr moin ne mujhe kitab gift ki thi dr lekin aapko khareedni padegi yes sir माई नेम इज़ अबरार एंड आई एम एन इंजीनियर बाई प्रोफेशन डॉक्टर साहब मेरा आपसे एक क्वेश्चन है इसी फ्रेम के अंदर जिस पर डिस्कशन हो रही है आपने स्टूडेंट यूनियंस का जिक्र किया ट्रेड यूनियंस का बट यू माइट एफ फॉर गार्ड द बेसिक राइट बेसिक डेमोक्रेसी और अनफॉर्चुनेटली ऑफ माई एज ग्रुप बट वी हैव ऑब्जर्व सो फार डेट दी वेदर दीज आर लेफ्ट और राइट पोलिटिकल पार्टीज दे हैवेंट गिवन प्रॉपरली द राइट द बेसिक राइट टू अस so how can we trust these uh, elite political elites when they by con- uh, constitutional rights se wo hame mehroom rakhte hain so kya iska bhi impact aa raha hai upar wali politics pe logon ka indifferent ho jana serious logon ka to kindly is pe roshni dal de think mai rakha the pakistan mein local you know like democracy has always been you know used for some ends i mean it hasn't been seen ke ye local you know like delivery system ka ek you know like key element hai aur uh, you know like decentralization har jagah hai uh, you know pakistan aisa mulk hai ki ye you know like local democracies usi waqt you know like revive ki gayi hain ek khaas you know to achieve you know particular ends at a particular point in time um i mean unless we make you know mean local government part of our like you know mean governance system to mera khayal hai you know matlab democracy hai sach jo unhone questions kiya uske bare mein bhi mera khayal hai like you know mean broader doubts about like about the wider democracy will you know continue to arise as far as i can see to ye to I, I mean this is basic this should be i mean you know instituted like immediately and you know people should be given voice at very local levels how they should run their affairs in the country kyunki puri duniya mein hai ye to ha lekin pakistan mein darasal wo logon you know matlab democracy yes matlab hai logon ki awaaz you know khasi you know khaufnak hoti hai na agar wo you know ikatthe ho jaye kisi level pe bhi to it's it's an issue thank you so much uh, you. dr arif azad thank you so much thank you.